After Vietnam, I applied to college. I couldn't get in. I got rejected all because I only had, I, I only had a, um, a GED, and I had no SATs or PSATs or anything. Thank you, a PSATs or SATs or anything like that. So I did apply and got rejected, so I thought I would stay in Special Forces my whole career, but my colleagues said you should apply. I did. But then I got an acceptance to Bronx Community College, and they were, had open enrollment for any Vietnam veterans. I went there. It was a very humbling experience. And my trajectory changed from an active serviceman to a reservist. And then I held these many jobs. And, you know, I've been a police officer, a paramedic, a registered nurse, a PA, an ocean lifeguard. And uh, as you've heard from Michelle, you know, a lot of people think that's pretty cool. A lot of people think, well, he's just a guy that couldn't keep a job. And, and, and probably there's some truth in, in both of those. But, but every one of those jobs later on became essential in the complex world I inherited as Surgeon General to truly understand how to communicate to people and, and how each of the levels of society function in this mythical integrated system that we always talk about and the importance of each one of these people in how our systems work or don't work. Um, I went on to medical school um, working those jobs and uh, I was fortunate to go, went to UC San Francisco which if you, those of you know San Francisco in the mid-70s, it was a melting pot of everything. The UCSF Medical School is just a few blocks from Haight-Ashbury. So we had one of everything in the class. Okay, 150 students, uh, the youngest being 18 who already had a master's degree in uh, math and, uh, and chemistry and science, some other science, and then a bunch of us who were Vietnam veterans that were a bit older, and the oldest person being 39 years old. 150 melting pot. And we spent a lot of time at San Francisco General, which is maybe one of the most diverse hospitals in the country. The trauma center, and in that community, over 100 languages and dialects spoken. People from all over the world. So again, I'm immersed in what we call health literacy today.